to begin this matchup between Marshall and Western Kentucky here on CBS Sports. Take a look at the starting lineups. Of course, you got to look out for Charles Bassey for Western Kentucky and Tavion Kinsey for Marshall. But you can't forget Jared West and Tavion Hollingsworth as well in this matchup, Tim. Yeah, Hollingsworth struggled in his last two games against Louisiana Tech, only 7 of 28 from the field. But you're talking about a guy who's number one in minutes all time at Western Kentucky in top 10 in scoring. And Jared West is a beast on the defensive end for Dan D'Antoni. Dan D'Antoni in his seventh season as Marshall head coach, 120 victories with the program, 7-2 on the year, 1-1 one one in conference play. And Rick Stansberry for Western Kentucky as the Hilltoppers are 9-4. Two and two in conference play, splitting their last weekend series against Louisiana Tech. And tip is off, and the Hilltoppers will get things started here inside EA Diddle Arena. Something to watch for is the three-point shooting of Western Kentucky right now. Dead last in Conference USA. And why is that important? Well, that opens up the inside for guys like Bassey and driving lanes for Josh Anderson and Tavion Hollinsworth. Here's Bassey down low in the post. Double team goes up with the right hand. Offensive rebound by Carson Williams. Josh Anderson now is looking for Bassey. Bassey wants it. Seven to shoot. Great defense and a steal by Andrew Taylor for the herd. Yeah, Taylor's a guy who's so energetic on the defensive end, the 6'3 sophomore out of Kentucky. He's averaging nearly seven rebounds a game out of that you know, one slash two position, which is really remarkable. Yeah, that was a three-headed monster in the guard position for Marshall with Taylor a part of that as well. And here is Jared West with his first shot short, gets his own miss, and three ball off the mark, but Couple of shots early on for Marshall, just couldn't get it to fall. Now on the, the other thing, end. The thing we talked about in the open was just the contrasting styles. Dan D'Antoni, he's been known to play fast. Uh, he wants to get up and down. If he can get 100 in this game, he wants to get 110. And as for Western Kentucky, always so tough, physical, love to get to that free throw line. Williams was gobbled up and a foul is going to be called. First oh, foul tonight. And you have to play fast against Marshall. They average 80 points per game. That's fourth in Conference USA play. Tavion McKnight, the freshman, kicks out to Tavion Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth turns back around, shoots, offensive rebound. Bassey hangs on to it at the corner. McKnight drives through and Bassey having some trouble, had, a, had an easy look after the offensive rebound, and you can just tell beating himself up on that, knowing he should have been able to score. You know, I, I really have been impressed with his agility, something that's really improved. Last year, had an injury, seizing in the injury on his leg, and he has bounced back, and I've followed his career the last three years, and he has really improved just from a fluidity standpoint. He's moving much better, the shot looks smoother, it's something that has come along. Thank you for making me look good, too. I, I like when I talk about somebody and then they score. It's like the reverse announcer's jinx. But the way that he's kind of kept on developing, I believe he's a first-round pick in next year's NBA draft. Smooth jumper from the elbow. Kenzie's elbow jumper doesn't fall. Pass is tipped. Stolen by Marshall. On the move. Alley-oop and was able to lay it in. You'll see a lot of Tavian Kinsey throughout this game, Tim. No, Kinsey is just explosive. The jumper is improving, but he came into Huntington as a big-time athlete. Now he's becoming a big-time basketball player, and that is a scary thought for everybody else in Conference USA. Well, he's also an Ironman. He averages 37 minutes a game and has played all 40 minutes three, four times this season, and the three is knocked down from the top of the key. Jarrett West has just been so solid. He's played big time minutes all four years. And this year he's distributing the basketball at an amazing rate, averaging almost seven assists a game. Bassey was double teamed, goes back up, gets hit from behind. 
Uh, you know, when I throws. start when I start projecting what type of big he's going to be at the next level, I think it's still developing. You know, we we knew as far as running the floor and athleticism, but that offensive game is becoming a little bit more polished and. When you're running back on defense, Danny, you got to find Tavion Kinsey because if you don't, the ball might fly over your head and he might be jumping over it at the same time. So Bassey knocks down the first free throw. Free throws are going to be very important in this game, Tim. Both teams atop the conference in free throw percentage and also some of the top teams in the nation as well. So Bassey hits both. He has... All four points for the Hilltoppers so far in the opening minutes. Jared West will keep it. Trapped in the corner, kicks it out. Andrew Taylor, the lob and the jam on the other end by Obina on a chili killing, the freshman. That's Dan D'Antoni style in a nutshell. They want to play fast. They want to move the ball side to side. And if there's a lob opportunity, well, that's certainly in the playbook. Well, he's talked about how he wants to let the players kind of let loose. And, and, and they play loose. And they practice loose. You know, I, I've been through a lot of practices, played for two different head coaches at the college level, Mike Jarvis and St. John's, and Bill Carmody at Northwestern. I've never, ever seen a practice like Marshall. The energy, they get up between two to 400 shots each per guy during practice, and the ball is constantly moving side to side. You know, Dan D'Antoni's brother, Mike D'Antoni, may have never won the quote-unquote big game or an NBA championship, but he actually revolutionized basketball. When he started that philosophy of Steve Nash and the Suns and playing fast and going small and being athletic, go take a look at the NBA right now, Danny. You know what every team is? Small, athletic, playing fast. And that was all Mike D'Antoni's vision. Yeah, he never won an NBA title, but he changed the game of basketball. I'm not sure he gets his due. And Dan's done such an amazing job in Huntington as the head coach of Marshall. Both these guys are legends in West Virginia. They did such an amazing job bringing him back home. Ever since he's come there, he's changed the perception of Marshall basketball. Well, you never know, Mike might be in position to win a championship this year as Bassey down low scores. I mean, you look across the NBA, the big story was the big trade for James Harden up in Brooklyn. Yeah, we might be able to do a two-hour show on that one. But, yeah, <laughs> Harden's reunited with Mike D'Antoni in Brooklyn, and that's going to be, well, a, a lot of drama there for the Nets, a lot of talent as well. Alley-oop to Bassey, he had to collect himself. Ball gets knocked out of bounds. And that'll take us to our first media timeout. Both teams having some trouble shooting, but it's going to be an exciting one. Keep it locked here on CBS Sports. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Tostitos. Get to the good stuff. And we're back on CBS Sports Network. Both teams having some trouble shooting early on, Tim. And Charles Bassey has all six points for the Hilltoppers and also five rebounds to go along with it. Yeah, he has just been a machine as of late. He leads the nation right now in dunks and total rebounds. He had eight double-doubles on the year. And a good idea by Rick Stansbury out of the timeout, Danny, to get him the ball, just not able to convert. Yeah, just keep feeding him and seeing what he can do down low. They haven't been able to stop him. Though he has had a lot of shots that just haven't been able to fall, and you can tell there has been some frustration with that, too. Here's Andrew Taylor. Three-point shot by Kinsey, good. And the thing about Tavian Kinsey, Tim, is that he doesn't shoot many threes, but he's very effective. That's his 10th making in 19 attempts. Well, he's shooting over 60% on the season, which is wild to think for any guard. And how about Bassey down low, throwing it down? Well, Charles Bassey, eight. The rest of Western Kentucky, zero. Driving down the baseline, kick out to the corner. Here's Jansen Williams with his first shot. Rebound by Davian McKnight. 
And a foul call. Yeah, Tavion Kinsey's a guy who was a super athlete coming out of high school, but still needed some work on his jumper and his overall offensive game. Well, that's clearly happening. He's averaging over 20 points a game. And I talked about leading the nation in dunks. Well, there's Charles Bassey doing what he does best. And I was so impressed, Danny. We called those games against Louisiana Tech with his timing from a defensive standpoint. He's averaging over three blocks a game, but not only does he block the shot, he keeps it in bounds, and a lot of times he starts to break kind of old school like Bill Russell used to do. Almost like controlled blocks. Doesn't get out of hand. Just goes up for the stop and, and makes sure he keeps it in play as well. Nine to shoot now. Bassey hesitated, now fires. That one's short. Okay, good call there on, on the hesitation. Uh, the shot's a little slow, but it's getting more efficient. You see there, affected that shot, either got a piece of it or even scared the defender. Hilltoppers in transition, kicks out to McKnight for three. Takes a high bounce, rebound Taylor for, by the redshirt sophomore. A long three, connects Great NBA long. range. How about that for the Thunder and Hurd? Blocked down low. Here come the Hurd, stolen away by Anderson. Anderson able to find Hollingsworth. He'll float it up, and he scores. And that's the first player other than Bassey to score for Western Kentucky. Yeah, and that's Tavion Hollingsworth's game, getting into the lane, getting to the free throw line. And he's been quiet the first seven plus minutes of this game. They have gotten a piece of it on a three-point shot. Heard up by three. Inside to Williams, and no foul call. Let's take another look at that three, Tim. We talk about long range. I mean, this is Dan D'Antoni style. You got buyers out there. You know, you're only about an hour drive from Nashville. He almost shot that from there because that thing was <laughs> logo-esque. And that is where a guy like Steph Curry changed the game where if you watch a kid now walk into a gym 10, 12 years old, they're not running under the hoop doing the mic and drill. They're running right to that three-point line. And we talked about Mike D'Antoni changing the game. But what Steph Curry has done from three-point range really changed everyone's idea of the three-point shot. So the D'Antoni brothers, they were basically ahead of the curve. Five, 10, 15 years. And if you have not seen Dan D'Antoni, his outfits are fantastic. This one's a little tamed. He goes a lot of the times the t-shirt with the blazer, a la Don Johnson, Miami Vice in the 80s. It's so revolutionary how the three-point shot has changed basketball now where you have guys like Bassey more so being a stretch five and having to be able to shoot from long range as well. Just what a shot from Byers there for the herd. Three-point shot for the Hilltopper is good. And the first man, the three-pointer. So all tied up at 13, almost eight minutes in. Kinsey goes down low. Here is Godron Miladinovic. Can't hang on to the ball. Recovered by West. The foul going to be called. Looks like it will be on Kenny Cooper for Western Kentucky. And it's good to have Cooper back. Missed the, the Louisiana Tech series last weekend. Uh, the lip's going to transfer. That started every game. A couple DNPs against Louisiana Tech, and now getting a chance in the first half and looking to get it going. Andrew Taylor knocks down a three. Already some three-point shots trading off back and forth between these two teams. Yeah, and that is, you mentioned it before, strength of Marshalls. They make nearly nine threes a game so far in this game, four. On the flip side, Western Kentucky, they average right around five made threes per game. That's dead last in Conference USA. There's Cooper, kicks out to Bassey. Eight to shoot, Bassey will drive. He gets blocked by Miladinovic. So how about the seven-footer getting the block on Bassey? Exciting action in Conference USA here on CBS Sports Network.
Welcome back on CBS Sports Network. Marshall with a three-point lead over Western Kentucky. Just under 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Take a look at the conference standings in the East Division. There you see Western Kentucky 2-2, two and two, Marshall 1-1. One and one. But, Tim, the big thing is that Conference USA has been split up in two divisions this season. Yeah, and each division is equally as tough. When you talk to coaches around Conference USA, they all agree that there's no more easy games. And a school like FIU go out there and hang 100 on you. Uh, right now, second in Conference USA in scoring. Rice was the team that everyone looked forward to that road trip. Not so much anymore. They're off to an outstanding start. Four and one in conference, leading Conference USA in scoring. It's rare that Marshall's not leading Conference USA in scoring. Right now, the Thundering Hair fourth in the conference. It's not going to make Dan D'Antoni happy out of a timeout. A turnover, but their style of play is exciting, and it's contrasting styles. It's only a few years ago these two teams met, met up in the Conference USA conference tournament and it was a, a barn burner of a game with John Elmore leading the thundering herd to a conference title. Offensive foul so the basket will not count for Carson Williams will go the other way. But that's one of the many changes Tim in conference play this year. Of course the East and West division. Also you have back to back games where you have to play the same team twice in a weekend and that can always pose some challenges in its own right as well. Well the big challenge is no coaches have really done it in conference you know and, and it's at the same site so i haven't talked to one coach that says oh i love back-to-backs but i think it's going to become a new normal in college basketball potentially because it cuts down on so much travel and it's going to be a cost-cutting thing and obviously what everyone's going through right now throughout the country i think schools conferences everyone's looking at maybe bottom line numbers so i wouldn't be surprised if we see this for the next couple of years Foul as Cooper drives down the lane, so he will shoot two. So far, Western Kentucky is just struggling shooting from the field right now, 31%. So here's the red shirt senior Cooper, 11 of 16 from the free throw line this year, misses the first. A substitution for Marshall as we see Darius George, the senior, check in. You know, watching Western Kentucky closely, I mean, they already have three basically top 100 net wins in beating Alabama, who just went to Kentucky and won, Rhode Island, Memphis. But I could just see Rick Stansbury is still tinkering with this lineup, Danny. He's trying to figure out who are the guys, who's going to close games with. And a guy like Carson Williams, he's trying to find his way as well. It's a tight rotation. He only played about eight or nine players a night. Jared West, wide open, top of the key. His three rims out, and Cooper goes straight to the side, maybe hurt. Holding on to that right arm of his. And he's in some pain. I yeah, hate to see that. And he knew right away, he exited stage left, and let's hope he's okay. Watch this, Wes kind of dips in. It was on the screen. On the other end, Jared West may have gotten a steal and scores for Marshall. He is the all-time leader in herd history with steals and fifth in Conference USA history. And basically one of the best on-ball defenders Forget about it in the conference uh, throughout college basketball. Carson Williams, no up there, and trying to go for the rebound and accidentally tipped it in. You know what you're supposed to do there, Danny, when that happens? You raise your hand if you're on Western Kentucky. You go, that's me. <laughs> you try to get as close as you can to somebody and just start raising your hand because you want those points on your stats. Traditionally, it's the, the player closest to the basket. I, I think you're going to go with McKnight there, the freshman. He's got to raise his hand. That's a freshman moment right there <laughs> because you got to get your points when you can, and th that those are cheapies that don't come too often. Yeah, not to mention he's just now gotten into the starting rotation now in his third consecutive start here this year. They all count the same at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Bloop single, a rope down the line, a tip in, a layup at the buzzer. 
No matter what, it goes, it goes to your team, and it's points for your team, for sure. So the officials are going to look things over here for a moment. Officials for tonight's game, Kevin Mathis, Terry Weimer, and Amy Bonner. I mean, Terry Weimer has refed the national championship game two out of the last four years. So you got an elite level staff there, referee crew, whatever you want to call them. But Terry Weimer is one of the best in the business. And this is one of the best games in college basketball. And I saw Jeff Goodman tweet out earlier, best games of the day. And this was the opening game on the slate. And I, I think that either one of these teams, if they got into the tournament, oh, nobody wants to see them. But right now, Marshall has a 69 net. It's the best in Dan D'Antoni's era. It's the best in Conference USA. And you look at the standings, we just saw them. You know, we saw Louisiana Tech, Danny, they looked really balanced, really tough. Western Kentucky. Conference USA is only going to get one team. I know you're not going to want to hear that as a conference fan. But whoever represents the conference, oh, they're going to be really, really dangerous in the tournament. I agree, as Carson Williams can't hit the free throw. Already six fouls for Marshall here in the first half. That three rolls out, rebound McKnight. Excellent point there, Danny. And now if you're Western Kentucky, get aggressive. Drive to the basket. Well, that'll work as well. Kevin O'Sullivan, the junior from Canada, knocks down a corner three. Kevin O'Sullivan. Yeah, he's close to 50% from three. It's only a six-man three, but he shot that one with confidence. Miladinovich couldn't hang on to the pass. The attempted lob now on the other end for the Hilltoppers, slashing through McKnight for two. Great body control there by McKnight. He's only a freshman. In his first game of his college career, he dropped 21 on Northern Iowa. But check out this body control. Danny, first of all, we got Osawe shooting that ball with confidence. That's what Western Kentucky needs, and then there wasn't much room there. I mean, that was, that was almost running back-esque of finding that hole and bursting through. And the you know, last game against Louisiana Tech, we were on the call, Danny, and McKnight had basically a point-blank shot at the basket, something he makes probably 99 out of 100 in a one-possession game, and he missed it. That was a game they ended up losing to Louisiana Tech. Western Kentucky fell behind by double digits early in the game, fought back, just came up a little bit short. And yeah, this is going to be a one bid league, even though Western Kentucky's gone out there and played a great schedule. But there is no wiggle room for mid majors this year as far as getting that at large bid. I don't think it's fair, but that's just the reality of it. Right. And then with the back to backs, that these teams are playing in conference play, it makes it even tougher because it adds more parity within the conference and, and no games are easy wins at all you have the first game then you got to regroup and go for the second game and try to get both of them yeah, and, and all the coaches we talked to it's the same story the second game's all mental whether you won keeping guys motivated and whether you lost how are you going to kind of spark a team and well, that's the challenge is coaches don't like it because coaches are creatures of you know doing things over and over again the same way habit and now that it's back to back, they're like, oh, we don't, we don't like this at all. Okay? I think they need to start getting used to it. And you're right, it's created a ton of parity, not just in Conference USA, but across so many conferences across the country. And, you know, Dan D'Antoni talked about, you know, the bottom team in the, in, the, in the conference, it's a lot stronger now this season. So even though Western Kentucky was picked to finish first, Marshall picked to finish third, that's not given. You have to earn that near the end of the season. I feel like Dan D'Antoni's always smiling under there. It's hard to tell with the mask, but he's got those eyes like he's always having fun. His teams play a fun style. Uh, you know what you're going to get when you when you watch them play. You know, I've seen them at their best. I mean, they've had 14 games where they've scored 100 plus points. And when he's been the head coach there at Marshall, I've seen games where they lose by 50 and they can't make a shot. Down low inside, rolling out David Early, the freshman. He will shoot two. 
You know, Dan Dan Tony talked about, you know, sometimes coaches are just are just too too strict. You gotta let loose a little bit sometimes. So, you know, he probably is smiling under that mask here and there. Early. Well, he's one of those guys that when there was pregame shoot arounds and you know, announcers are supposed to go and get their information and get tidbits. I would say coaches' participation in the old shoot arounds was not very high. Most of the time he doesn't show up to them. So, you know, there are so many coaches I've seen guys running out of bounds plays, guys diving on loose balls and shoot arounds, uh, screaming at guys. I mean, we're talking about hours before game. Dan D'Antoni, shoot arounds for him, optional. <laughs> Eight minutes to play in the first half. Western Kentucky holding on to a three-point lead at the moment. Here's Luke Frampton and just miscommunication on the pass. It'll be Marshall Ball when we come back after the break. Hilltoppers up 23 to 20 on CBS Sports Network. A look back at the 2018 Conference USA Championship game between Marshall and Western Kentucky. John Elmore knocking down a three there. And how about near the end of the game, a chance for the Hilltoppers to win, but just couldn't get it in. Marshall escaping with a one-point win, winning the Conference USA Championship, hitting a berth in the NCAA tournament. And Tim, that's where you talk about how, how rough it is, how it's just a one big lead, because both of these teams had over 20 wins in the season. Yeah, and Western Kentucky that year got into the NIT and made some serious noise. Marshall that year, went and played Wichita State and knocked off the Shockers. Landry Shamit had his struggles going up against Jerry West and John Elmore, the all-time great for Marshall. There was actually 17 babies named John or Elmore after they went to the dance that year, and that is a total lie. <laughs> Layup is good by Hollingsworth. And then Marshall, that second round of the tournament, lost to, to West Virginia. And Western Kentucky reached the NIT semifinals, losing to Utah by five. So Danny, this is what's so impressive about Bassey, right? He's going to get the block shot, but check out how he blocks it. He doesn't block it into the stands. He blocks it, and then it leads to an offensive bucket for Hollinsworth. And his awareness is really outstanding, and it's improved since his first year. Frampton at the wing for three, got it. And now Western Kentucky continuing to go on a run, now up by eight. Yeah, that was probably the best two possessions of Western Kentucky basketball over the last three games. The block shot, the transition, hitting their shooter Frampton for three. And they looked really smooth on those last two plays. You can see the energy is picked up and then another Marshall turnover. It just seems like Rick Stansberry's team, when they shoot an outside shot right now, Danny, they're like begging for it to go in because they've had so many well-documented struggles from the outside. They're getting to the free throw line. That's what his teams are known for. Bassey's been solid, but they're just not playing with that swag on the offensive end. And hey, it's going to be a long season, but the last couple of possessions they've played with like that. And that's the six straight field goal knocked down by the Hilltoppers, and they continue to roll on. And the struggles continue for Marshall. That's going to be a foul on Cooper. It's great to see Cooper back in because, you know, he, he looked really hurt when he, when he came off of the bench. And who knows if it, he had a, his shoulder had kind of popped out and they popped it back in. Those are one of the things that I don't understand how people do that. That is amazing. I'm happy that he's out there as well. But six straight field goals for Western Kentucky. You can just see that there's a rhythm and a bounce right now to the Hilltopper step. Also a 7-0 run that was broken up the alley -oop to George in the post. So Marshall able to stop the bleeding for just a moment. Here approaching six minutes to play in the first half. Bassey with the handoff to Hollingsworth. Almost lost it, recovers. Anderson drives. Good defense down low by Jansen Williams. Now on the other end, Williams for three, yes. Three point I love that out of Jansen Williams. We talked about 
the defensive play. He goes, I deserve to shoot this. I made the defensive play on the other end. He shot that ball with confidence, and that really is Marshall basketball in a nutshell. It's always a great thing to see. A great play made on defense. You get rewarded on the other end on offense. Franklin goes down low to Bassey. He's double teamed. Hollingsworth for three. No luck there. Kinsey's been quiet here, 24 and white. Let's see if he tries to make a play. Kinsey moving. That one's short on the fadeaway. And that ball stripped away. And here's Kinsey, one on one with Rawls. He lays it in easily for two. Yeah, that's a pro move, everybody. Want to see a professional move? You're one on one with someone. He has equally as good a chance to stop you, and you got to the place that you wanted to get to, and Danny, he made it look easy. And how about that? Now a 7-0 run for the Thundering Herd. That ball manages to stay in by early, but Western Kentucky will hang on. Now go back. Like, if you're a defender here, like Rawls had a chance to uh, give him some sort of resistance, but Kinsey was able to get to his spot, and then once he's able to jump, you know, I've been there as a defender when you guard an athletic guy. And when he jumps and you know you can't jump as high, that's about as helpless as anyone could feel because you're just like, there's nothing I can do right now. Oh, absolutely. I, I know the feeling. <laughs> I'm sorry. To, this wasn't supposed to be a therapy session. <laughs> well, tonight at 9 Eastern, we switch over to the ice with number three, North Dakota, taking on 17th-ranked Denver. Catch it all right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. The quick thing about Josh Anderson, because he just made both free throws there, he shot 59% as a freshman. Right now, he's over 86%. He's second in Conference USA. He's got the steal. And the three-point play for the senior out of Baton Rouge. And he's always been an incredible athlete. We're talking about a top 100 recruit at a high school. But I love the fact that he's put in the work and great hands there and then the concentration to finish. I feel like Western Kentucky is like ready to break through. You know, they split against Louisiana Tech, but the Charles Bassey carried them in game one. Game number two, they were not at their best, still had a chance to win. I don't think we've even come close to seeing the best basketball from the Hilltoppers this year. Not at all. Some would say, you know, conference play, it's still pretty early. You know, you still have the rest of this month and the entire month of February before you get to that conference tournament in early March. Down low, Miladinovic. Oh, what a block. Good stop down low. And now on the other end, Anderson will draw a foul. You know what the oh, definition wow. of, of insanity is? Yeah, Repeating yeah. something over and over again and thinking you're going to get a different result. When you're one-on-one -on -one with Charles Bassey, I'm just going to let everybody know. Shh, little secret here between us, okay? Don't try to go up and score on him. Okay, throw it out. Find the teammate. Because his timing is just about as good as I've seen in college basketball. You know, and I played against Greg Oden. Now, Greg, obviously didn't have the pro career that everyone expected, but his timing and his length was unbelievable. I remember being on the floor with Odin, and when he jumped, like, the hoop went away. It was kind of difficult <laughs> to score against him, but Bassey, not only does he block the shot, he keeps it going, and once again, opens up a transition opportunity for Western Kentucky. 10-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Under four minutes to go, three-point attempt. Once again, knocked down for the Thundering Herd. Six of ten, Marshall is from long range. Anderson thought about answering back. Instead, Jordan Rawls over to Bassey. He'll shoot from the top of the key. And a foul down low. So Bassey couldn't get the three, but he made a strong block on the defensive end on the seven foot Miladinovic. We're coming back after the break on CBS Sports Network.
327 remaining in the first half here on CBS Sports Network. AT&T 5G at the half coming up in a matter of moments with Adam Zucker and John Rothstein. And Tim, even though Marshall has been getting it done from three-point land, six of ten, they're still down here in the first half, and Western Kentucky has been able to make that up by going 10 of 12 from the free throw line. Yeah, really, both teams play into their strengths. You know, we talked about this in the open. Western Kentucky, the best free throw shooting team in Conference USA and living up to it. They shoot over 80% of the team, are actually 10 of 12 in this game. And on the flip side, this is what Dan D'Antoni does. The three-point shot has kept them in this game. I think Marshall's fortunate to only be down seven points. Rebound by Bassey. Almost with a double-double in the first half. Second in the nation in double-doubles this year already with eight. Anderson looking around. Hollingsworth drives, floats it up, rolls off. And Williams on the putback attempt. So a foul on Darius George. So that have free throws from Williams. Last year, Carson Williams averaged 14 points a game. Now, he was primarily the center because Charles Bassi had a season in the injury. But from 14 points a game last season to five points a game this season, and the hardest part, I believe, for Carson Williams is his role. He's trying to find his place. They're actually going to get Bassey here on a lane violation. Excellent call. He was in a bit early. But that is hard for Carson Williams because you were the five last year, now you're the four this year. Now when Bassey goes out of the game, you're back to the five. And it just seems like when those two guys are out there together, there's not a lot of flow or rhythm, almost in each other's way. It'll take some time for them to find some consistency as this season rolls along. Bassey gets the rebound there. Under three now to play in the first. Anderson handed off to Rawls. I would bring Bassey high here, get him in a pick and roll situation. And they do, Bassey with some sort of a screen. Seven to shoot, Anderson goes up and finishes over the seven footer in Mladinovic. You see the athleticism from Anderson because that is a big, big man. And that's what I mean, get him in the pick and roll, get him playing defense out of his comfort zone as Kinsey with the tough drive going to his strong hand. We haven't seen much of Kinsey in the first half. He does have nine points, however, a team high for the herd. Hollingsworth. That one takes a high bounce. Bassey couldn't come down with it. Recovered by Marshall. Kinsey for three, no. Offensive rebound, Taylor, but they're going to call it off and call a foul instead. And they're going to get Taylor with a push in the back. Easy call for the official. A pretty pivotal shot there. Down eight, kind of an open three. Kinsey's not able to convert. Instead of making it potentially five, go to the free throw line now. If you're Rawls and you can push just to 10. And those are the little things that when you really watch a game, can decide so much. Instead of you cutting it to five, the other team pushes it to 10, and you lose all that momentum. I want to get them closer within this one before you go into the locker room as Rawls, the sophomore from Chattanooga, Tennessee, hits the first free throw. Jansen Williams will return in for the Thundering Herd. As this game rolls on, so far, Western Kentucky is still shooting very well from the charity stripe. As Rawls hits them both. Just over 90 seconds remain in the first half. The lead is back up to double digits for the Hilltoppers. Three-point shot from early. Rebound Bassey. 
Now this is a key possession of your Western Kentucky. Now you can push it to 12 or 13 and seize this moment. Offensive rebound, Bassey waits and he gets fouled. So free throw shooting has been the real key for this lead for the Hilltoppers. Great job getting to the backboard as well. Just an utter domination on the glass for Western Kentucky. They're out rebounding Marshall right now. I got 27 to 11. We'll update those stats at halftime. Adam Zucker, the genius John Rothstein, staying humble, staying hungry there. Nobody knows more college hoops than John at halftime. Rick Stansbury's got to be pleased with his team's effort. Now you look back at that shot by Ginzi. Could have cut it to five. Instead, it's 12, and it's almost becoming danger zone time because now Western Kentucky's smelling blood before the half. Almost got the steal. Marshall needs to get it across half court, and they will. Pressure here in the final minute. Kenzie. Good to George. Now hits a deep three. Can't find the rim. Kenzie on the offensive rebound. He can't finish. Just the struggles continue here in the final minutes of this half. And timeout going to be called by the Hilltoppers. And they have to be pleased along with Charles Bassey getting his ninth double-double. Already in the first half, 10 points and 12 rebounds. How about Josh Anderson? 12 points, a perfect 3-3 three of three from the field and 5-5 five of five from the free throw line. Be right back after the break on CBS Sports Network. Charles Bassey, his ninth double-double already in the first half, Tim. It's a, who knows what else he's going to be able to do in the second half for Western Kentucky. Yeah, he's just been wildly consistent this year, game after game. And, and it gives you a little bit more, whether it's stepping out from three or blocking more shots or post-up game, that time carving out some space down low. It's almost like he's getting better every single time he steps on the floor. And I know Rick Stansbury's like, hey, we can run it back next year. Good luck, coach, keeping this guy in Bowling Green, Kentucky. <laughs> The Hilltoppers are out rebounding Marshall 29 to 11 in the first. 29 to 12, excuse me. Rawls keeps it himself and he'll get the shooter's bounce. A 14 point game now. And you remember that Kinsey three that could have made it five? Those are the shots that are turning point moments in games. Now almost, a, a, I have to get this basket, some sort of momentum. Look for Kinsey to come off a screen, try to make a play one-on-one. -on -one. Gets two screens, has to get it to Taylor. Taylor has to throw it up. I'm not sure if he got it off in time at the buzzer. They may check to see if it counts. What do you think, naked eye? I think it does. I always like to make an explanation and then I get to see the replay. But I think it does count. I'm going to say it doesn't count. Next explanation. What do you think, Danny? That is so close. Almost. Another look here. Uh, it may have still been in his hands as, the, as we saw triple zero. I'm not exactly sure. What is the best social media account? One tenth. At fingertips still on the ball. I think that shot won't count. <laughs> Oh, that is, oh, man, I'm happy I'm not Terry Weimer and his crew have to make this call. Uh, if you're Dan D'Antoni, you need this bucket. You need that momentum. It, it cuts it to 11 or else it's going to be 14. If they called it good on the floor, is there enough evidence to review and call it off? You can see Terry Weimer holding his hands up there about the fingertips. That's why I was saying it was just, it would be so close because he may have to have fingertips on the ball there. It looks out of his hand there. Now this is a tough one. I, I, I said no, uh, yes, and then I said no. I'm just happy I'm not an official. I'm getting paid to announce the game, everybody, <laughs> not officiate it. Well, this is early preparation for the NCAA tournament for Weimer. Absolutely. One more angle here. Yeah, I think it's still on his hand. 
It is close, though, man. Yeah. That is definitely close. Fingertips. The definition of fingertips right there. The suspense is just killing me. Well, it's, it's mainly for momentum purposes for Marshall because it all depends on the deficit going into the locker room. I mean, being down 11 and being down 14, you're still, it's still a double-digit deficit, but still, it gives you some momentum going into the second half in the locker room. Look at the guys still waiting there. Jansen Williams, the refs, this might be a hung jury right here. We might have one ref saying good, two refs saying no good. Deliberation, let's put a clock on these officials. Yeah, that is about as close as I've ever seen. But I thought it was in his hand. Final Doyle declaration, I think it's in his hand. I think it's in his hand. Final answer? In his hand. From no that basket. angle, it looks like it's in his hands. Stip fingertips. It's a great job by our crew. There it is. There's the light. Yeah. I mean, that is close. Yeah. But we're going to get a dramatic either good or no good sign here from Terry Weimer. So, okay, so there is a twist. They might count it as a D2. Forget basket counter doesn't count. It, it may be a, a D2 instead of a three. Amazing. Well, the basket will count, but still a deficit for Marshall. AT&T 5G at the half coming after, after the break on CBS Sports Network. About to begin the second half here on CBS Sports Network, 46-34, Hilltoppers above Marshall. But, Tim, even though Marshall's down by 12, we have seen some good plays from them in the first half for sure. Well, they're explosive. Dan D'Antoni wants to play fast, and the three-point shot has really saved them and kept them in this game so far. Dan D'Antoni wants to push pace, and now trailing by double figures, got to expect this team is going to try to push tempo in this game and try to get back in the game. I think the bigger thing is going to be on the backboards where it's been all Western Kentucky, but Marshall hanging in there 6 of 13 in the first half from three. And in my eyes, they're going to have to make seven or eight more to get competitive in this game because Charles Bassey is a man amongst boys in that first half. Ten points, 13 rebounds, and we saw it all, whether it was dunks, finishes down low. But the thing is, his timing is as good as I've seen in college basketball in a long time. Watch how quick he is off the ground. Oh, you want to come for No problem with that. A double-double in the first half, and check out the rebound, Danny. It's been all Western Kentucky on the inside. 13 rebounds for Bassey alone in the first half. Marshall, 13 rebounds total. That kind of sums it up right there as we're about to begin the second half. Also keep in mind the late shot from Andrew Taylor at the buzzer to end the first half. They counted the shot, but it's not a three. It was a deep two instead. And her get things going with Jansen Williams. Yeah, a good play out of halftime. So some momentum, right? Kind of really close call. If you're just joining us right before the half, we thought it was in his hand. They say it was, wasn't. Instead of a three, it was a two. So you get that deuce, and then you score right out of the break. Williams called for traveling, was covered by two defenders down low. Yeah, I think this is actually one of the most important possessions in the game because you get the, the deuce before half, you score right out of half, and now you can feel that momentum kind of brewing. That's why that bucket was so important for the thundering herd. That had to be the message from Dan D'Antoni in the locker room. You know, we got the bucket, and now another made shot. Nothing but net there. And it, that's kind of, you could see that momentum starting to swing, and now you got Marshall kind of playing with that swagger and confidence after giving up 46 big points in the first half. Those are the most points that Western Kentucky has scored all year. 
Uh, watch Kinsey. He did not have this in his bag of tricks when he was a freshman. Great job creating space. You know, I was checking out some mock draft boards. They had him as a first round projection. I could see why. As far as an athletic standpoint, you got elite. And now that the shooting Danny has caught up to the athleticism, well, now you got to project where the shooting is going to be in a couple of years. I mean, he has a D and three guy written all over him. And hopefully we'll see the shooting get better for Kinsey here in the second half. He was four of 11 with just nine points in the first. Yeah, maybe more than that. I don't want to limit him to just a D and three guy, but the athleticism is just off the charts. Alley oop lob from West, and there's nobody home for Williams to catch the lob. Call a foul on Carson Williams for Western Kentucky. Yeah, we had a Williams on Williams crime. Carson Williams, Jansen Williams getting physical. Kendi out to the corner. Offensive rebound, Taylor, he puts it back up and in. Now, Andrew Taylor is one of the best rebounders from a guard position in college hoop. He averages seven rebounds a game. I mean, Charles Bassey's in there, and at 6'3", he out-hustled them. And that's what Marshall needed because, Danny, like you said, Charles Bassey had 13 rebounds. Heck, Marshall as a team had 13 rebounds in that first half. They'll go to Bassey down low. They're going to double-team him. Now one-on-one, -on -one. Bassey drives, can't finish. Tipped away, rebounded by the Thundering Herd. Jared West, we haven't seen much of him in the first half. Good ball movement here from Marshall, side to side. McKenzie open. Could get the fall, rebound Bassey. Yeah, he could almost do that off the backboard to himself. There was no one in front of him at that time. I know that's kind of an unusual play to think about, Danny, but he's so athletic that when no one was in front of him, he ended up floating it. He could have just rifled that off the glass right to himself and laid it in. What a marvelous sight to see for sure. Yeah, it's easy for me to say as I'm like a, a dad bod 40 year old. <laughs> I'm like, here's what he should have done. A miscommunication on the inbound, and great save by Taylor, keeping it in play. West, down low. And no foul called as Obina a chili, on a chili killing. One of the foul, won't get it. Now on the other end, Davion McKnight, back down low to Bassey. Bassey almost triple team, finds an open Josh Anderson at the corner, couldn't sink the three. And Lee has an over the back foul on Bassey. A good sequence there if you're Marshall from a defensive standpoint. I don't think we've said Marshall and good defense all game long, but I'll say it there because uh, that's what you want Josh Anderson doing, shooting threes and an excellent box out by Williams. That was a good physical possession there for Marshall. Hasn't been a lot of them. And also the forced turnover as well as West. Had it stolen away. Anderson with the hammer. John Anderson with a dunk and dunk. Increased the lead back to double digits and a block by Bassey. On a chilly killing, knocks down a three. How about the freshman? He's going to say, my name is difficult to say, but my game is pretty tight. And stepping out, he's got a massive upside. Talk about schools like Dayton, VCU recruited him. We've seen a little bit of everything from on a chilly killing. And we see a little bit of everything from Josh Anderson, who's really good in that first half. And then check out the athleticism. You know the sky put on Josh Anderson is when he jumps, don't jump. <laughs> Six the coaches don't say that. Pl players say that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, you don't want to. Yeah. Coaches don't put that up on the board. Players say that to each other. Anderson again. That time denied. No foul. But course the Williams. We have a foul is called before the putback by Williams. So Armachilli killing. 
We'll get called for the foul, and Williams, or Anderson, excuse me, will go to the line. Yeah, Anderson's done such an excellent job of getting to the free throw line. We talked about in the first half, 59% free throw shooter. As a freshman, he's made himself into, I mean, he's creeping towards 90% from the line. In this game right now, he's 8 of 8 from the line. 17 points. He's been a difference maker. The last three games, I've had a chance to call for Western Kentucky, and this is the best they've looked from an offensive standpoint. And you can just see their confidence growing because that was something that was really in and out in the last series against Louisiana Tech. Oh, Kenji! On the other end for the Thundering Herd. Man, oh man. Kinsey can fly. We may have a show here in the second half, Tim. Still a seven point lead for the Hilltoppers. Five to shoot now. Hollingsworth. Two to shoot, has to get it up. Alley up to Bassey as the time expires. The Tim, I'm not sure if that was planned or not. Jared West. Three ball takes a high bounce. Hilltoppers in transition. Anderson going again. Offensive foul. An exciting opening minutes here in the second half as Anderson will get some help from his teammates. Shaking up a bit, but it's the dunk show in EA Dental Arena. More to come after the break on CBS Sports Network. Fifty-four to forty-five, Hilltoppers lead over the Thundering Herd. Tim will take a look at tonight's Geico difference makers as Davion Kinsey waking up EA Diddle Arena with that beautiful slam dunk and so far of thirteen points. Yeah, every year he has just gotten better in every facet of the game. He's becoming a little bit more efficient. Well, maybe not so much today, getting fifteen shots off at thirteen points, but he's had some monster games. Thirty-one points against Wright State, twenty-eight against Ohio, shoot over sixty percent from the field, and then Charles Bassey. Are you not entertained? Game after game, we've watched blocking shots, affecting shots, rebounding the basketball. This has become basically a daily performance from him. So consistent this year. Well, we knew it was going to be an exciting matchup here between these two teams. That three-point shot couldn't find the rim. Hilltoppers in transition. McKnight to Carson Williams. And an offensive foul on Western Kentucky. You know, Dave, that's what I talked about with Carson Williams. I, he's having a tough time finding his role. Last year, he knew he was going to be the five, and now playing alongside of Bassey, when I watch him out there, he's trying to figure out where to go. And that was just kind of a secondary break and sets an illegal screen. He's just not playing with the same confidence that he was last year. Kenzie, all alone, gets through and finishes. And the best thing that happened to Davion Kinsey, he went to Marshall. And playing for Dan D'Antoni, he gave him that freedom you were talking about, Dan, in the first half. A lot of coaches don't want to give up that freedom. And Tavion Kinsey, he's growing as an offensive player because Dan D'Antoni's allowing him to make mistakes and kind of learn his game. And as, as time has worn on, he's turned into one of the best players in this conference. Oh, put back slam, a fail by Bass. He really tried to throw it down on the other end, Kinsey! Wow. Are you not entertained, Tim? I'm very entertained, Dave. I'm very <laughs> entertained. Did you call it a dunk party before? I, I felt like it was either a dunk fest. What was your to it, it was a dunk party. Yeah, it has been that. Great call. An exciting second half. Just shows the intensity of Conference USA basketball. Williams diving for the loose ball, recovered by the thundering herd. Kinsey open for three. And West will try to score. He won't find the rim. We're going to 
So Bassey down low with the left hand. Offensive rebound, Williams. He puts it back in for two. Well, there's a way to kind of find your groove through Carson Williams. Get down low, use that body of yours to carve out some space, retrieving that offensive glass. Hey, you talked about a party. That's right around everyone's getting out of work, so there are a lot of parties going on on a Friday. Not so much for Bassey, but for Kinsey. Up, up, and away. Excellent pass there. You know, that's what Marshall works on in practice, lobs. You know when you're like a kid, you lower the, you lower the hoop at your respective court, you throw it up to your buddy, you're practicing those lobs. Marshall does that in practice. And so far in this game, I've counted five lobs that have connected. <laughs> That's the type of stuff, the creativity that Dan D'Antoni allows his players to have. Anderson, oh, he finds out he's open down low and scores underneath. He is having a great season high performance now with 20 points, five of six shooting, and a career high nine of nine from the free throw line. Loose ball recovered by the Hilltoppers. Bassey has to kick it out. Jordan Rawls for three. Rebound by Jared West. And look out! Jansen Williams joins in on the duck party as well. And so many explosive plays here in, in this stretch, Tim. You would think it's a it's a close game, but Marshall's still down by nine here. Bassey's three, in and out. Of course, an important possession here for Marshall. Down nine, to get a hoop, you get the under 12 time, timeout coming. Corner three, yes! And Jansen Williams can throw it down and shoot from long distance. And he's such an amazing athlete, one of the all-time shot block leaders in Marshall history. You see Marshall right now, a 15-point edge from the three-point line. They're going to get an offensive foul on Bassey. And we are having a party in Bowling Green, Kentucky. What type of party? We're having a dunk party. If you don't know, now you do. Tomorrow night, 10 Eastern, find out what it means to be a Cowboy as PBR returns to the great outdoors for the start of the 2021 season. Catch the PBR Unleash the Beast American Roots Edition right here on CBS Sports Network. A six-point game in EA Dental Arena. That three by Jansen Williams, Tim, was a three that the Thundering Herd needed to get back within this game. Yeah, they have a massive edge from the three-point line. Uh, really, their only edge in this game. Western Kentucky's dominated the glass. They've dominated the free throw line. But a 15-point edge to Marshall at the three-point line has kept them in this. And keep in mind, they still have to play each other again as Kinsey hangs on, gets his own miss, and puts it back in. And this is the one different thing for the back-to-backs for Marshall and Western Kentucky. They will go to Marshall to play again, and they'll have a few days in between to get prepared. Then the shoe, here's Williams off the left iron, rebounded by Byers. Andrew Taylor gets a screen. Three from Williams, got it! And he is staying hot. Now a one-point game here, Tim. He's had some monster games this year. 24 earlier in the season against Robert Morris. 19 against Carl's of Charleston. Right now, he's got the hot hand. He's shooting it with confidence. Marshall on a 10-0 run. And now the Hilltoppers need a bucket to break the streak. As we just 
Made it past the midway point here in the second half. Osawe, great defense from West. Western Kentucky scoreless now and in over two and a half minutes. West drives. No good. Here's Luke Frampton for three. Yes. First bank, three pointer. Frampton. And traveling violation on the herd. And Luke Frampton's a transfer from Davidson over his last eight games. He's shooting close to 50% from three. And he makes almost three threes a game. And that's what he did at Davidson, too. He led the Atlantic 10 in threes made as well as threes per game. Nice job of getting his feet set. Marshall had a chance to take the lead, and Frampton's three pushed it back to four. Frampton was the second player in Davidson history with 100 made threes. The very first, a guy named Steph Curry. As that rolls out of bounds off of Carson Williams. A little known fact about Steph Curry, his jersey is not retired at Davidson because he did not graduate there. Wow. So, yeah, that's a little fun fact. Or maybe not so fun for Steph, <laughs> or he doesn't care. Seems like he did okay without his degree. Yeah, you know, got a couple of NBA championships. I think, I think he did pretty well for himself. Greatest shooter in NBA history, some would say. No, I think that's a fact. I don't think you have to add that on anymore, Danny. I think he's the greatest shooter ever. He got an offensive foul. He was trying to get Kinsey a post up. You know, this is really Marshall's time because Bassey's on the bench getting a breather. This is where you've got to take advantage of that if you're Marshall, especially driving towards the basket, getting some easy ones because Carson Williams at 6'5". He's the tallest player out there right now for Western Kentucky, 22 in black. Absolutely right. Williams working his way in the post. Kicks it out to Kenny Cooper for three. It's good. That's a good sign for Kenny Cooper. Remember, he got injured in that first half with his shoulder. He's shooting less than 20% from three, and they've pushed his lead up to seven with Bassey on the bench. Hilltoppers in transition. alley denied by Byers. And now on the other end, Taylor kicks out in the corner. Three-point shot. No luck there, but an offensive rebound by Marshall. He tried to lob it up to Kinsey, but Frampton was blocking him down low, so a foul call. Under eight minutes to play, a seven-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Can they hang on to the lead? Find out after the break on CBS Sports Network. 6-0 run for Western Kentucky at the 66-59. Let's revisit the AT&T 5G fast analysis with Charles Bassey, Tim. Well, it's just been ultra consistent for the 6'11 junior from Nigeria who, after their latest win, I got a chance to interview him. I said, who do you compare your game to the most? He had a really interesting comparison. He said Len Bias, the late great Maryland star who passed away way too early, drafted by the Celtics. And that was interesting for me. You got a kid from Nigeria comparing himself to an 80s college basketball player and someone who a lot of people compared Len Bias to Michael Jordan. And Jordan looked up to Len Bias and, you know, we never really saw the best of him, but I was shocked to hear Bassey mention that that's someone he's trying to pattern his game after. It's incredible. Marshall's right, 30 basket. years later, it's like you, know, you could only see him play on YouTube highlights. That bucket by Marshall broke the 6-0 run by Western Kentucky. Bassey with the rebound and the putback. That's his 16th rebound here on the night. Now he has just an amazing feel, and his timing is so good. He got a piece of that ball, too. It went in. But he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And he has gotten so much better, folks, from freshman year to now. It seems like he's getting better and more confident with his offensive game every time he's on the floor. Under seven minutes here in regulation. Bassey will fire from deep. Connects! And he's got a three-point shot as well, Tim. 
Jared West off the screen, has space. Rebounded by Goran Miladinovic and a block down low. You know, we talked about the rebounds. We talked about the block shots. No one has more dunks. And now you're going to start making threes? What are you going to do for an encore, Charles Bassey? Walk on water? <laughs> now this first May 3 of the night, one for four so far in this game. Maybe on McKnight, kicks out to Jordan Rawls. They'll go to Bassey, double teamed, 10 to shoot. Corner three from Josh Anderson. Rebound Taylor. Byers, oh, what a Euro and a finish. When the Euro step is done right, Danny, how pretty is it? The thing of beauty. Anderson denied by Miladinovic. Hilltoppers get the rebound. Tavion Hollinsworth from the free throw line. Yes. Jared West thought about answering back, had to let the ball go at the last second. Miladinovic elbow jumper. Bullseye. Miladinovic has had moments in this game. Uh, he's a sophomore, he's seven foot, he's being matched up with one of the best big men in college hoop. He's had his moments. Let's say he's outplayed him, stepped out, made a jump shot there. He's matched his physicality at times. This has been a great learning experience for the young fella. Yeah, Dan D'Antoni talked about how he's been making progress throughout this season. He started in one of the two games against Louisiana Tech two weekends ago. McKnight. Out to Anderson, four to shoot. Rawls inside, floats it up, got it. Marshall down by eight, and Byers will shoot the three. Too strong. Anderson, no foul. Possession will stay with Western Kentucky, and Byers is down. Yeah, tough sequence for Byers there. I thought he might have rushed that shot, and then on the other side, he gets hit on the leg area. He's down. Hopefully, he's going to be okay. Well, if he gets checked upon, we'll step aside here for a moment on CBS Sports Network. So we resume play, approaching four minutes to go in the game. Jansen Williams knocks down the three for the Thundering Herd. Good to see Byers okay on the bench. So a five point game. Hilltoppers trying to hang on for the first of. This two-game series here against Marshall. Six to shoot. Hollingsworth, three to shoot. Has to throw it up, loses it, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. So that will take us to our... around there. Ton of standing around for Rick Stansberry's crew. They've looked good at times, but you look up at the scoreboard, only up five. And we're back. Hilltoppers up by five with 329 left to play in regulation. Coming up next, our College Hoops coverage continues with some MAC action as Bowling Green battles Buffalo. Catch it all on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Got to check out Justin Turner there. Giving you 20 points a game for Michael Huger's squad. They were beat up last time by Ball State. Now the MAC is another one of those conferences where really no easy nights. Turner, one of those guys in the offseason, Danny, he looked at maybe transferring, going to a bigger school. This offseason in college basketball is going to be nuts. If you don't know it, you don't graduate if you don't want to. You can come back and play a whole nother year. So it's going to be interesting to see who goes to what school and what happens with the transfer portal. It's usually lit up this 
offseason, it's going to be on fire. Exactly. With the NCAA granting an extra year of eligibility, who knows what we'll see in the offseason. Jared West, the lob, and Bassey interfering, preventing Darius George on the slam. That last possession for Western Kentucky, there was a lot of standing around. Let's see what Rick Stansberry goes to out of a timeout here because you know he put his play in place during that stoppage of play, and it's get Bassey a touch. Bassey, pass was tipped, gets it right back, hesitates, goes up, no foul, back up again, and good. And he has set a new career high. And rebounds tonight. At least a new season high as West blocked from behind by Carson Williams. Oh, I don't know how he got to that ball, Carson Williams, because I thought that was a shrewd play by West. He actually went offhand, left-handed, tried to quick shoot it there. But Williams from behind got a piece of it. And now Western Kentucky's up seven with the ball. What a great play by Carson Williams. Hilltoppers starting to pull away. Two twenty-one left to play in regulation. Western Kentucky up by seven over Marshall. Time now to get to the good stuff brought to you by Tostitos. Tavion Kinsey getting up, up, and away. Talk about one of the best small forwards in college basketball. Danny, you said it correctly. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's been a party in this game. How many dunks do you think we've seen? Eight? Ten? We've seen a ton for sure. And Charles Bassey close to a 2020 type of double-double night. 19 points, 19 boards. Eight of those rebounds, offensive rebounds so far. You got to think that he's going to get a touch here out of a timeout for Rick Stansbury's crew. Nine to shoot. McKnight. Nowhere to go. Kicks out to Anderson. Three to shoot now. Anderson lets it go. Deep two. Got it. And how about the evening that Josh Anderson is having now? 22 points. He's been sensational on both ends of the floor. Now, if you're Marshall, you got to play fast. First good shot's got to go up. Hey, travel on Kinsey. And yeah, Josh Anderson has been. This is a tough spot to be in. You get the ball, you got to make something happen. Everybody knows it. Good job by Byers challenging the shot. Can't believe it goes in. As for Anderson, he's got it going. And it really started at the free throw line, Danny. He's been awesome at the line, and that's something he's improved upon. And. You know, when you're not confident at the line, you're not confident playing. He's confident at the line, and he has been confident on the floor. Overall, Western Kentucky, 90% from the free throw line, 19 of 21. They have not missed from the charity stripe in the second half. And meanwhile, for Marshall, they have been scoreless. In almost two and a half minutes, not a good sign as we approach under 90 seconds to play in this game. You got to start playing a lot faster if you're Marshall. First good look's got to go up. Wow, well, about the three from Jansen Williams and a quick timeout call. So 120 left to play. Be right back after the break on CBS Sports Network. Well, the quick three by Williams put the thundering herd by six and Tim. That's exactly where you got to start if you want to get back in this one quickly. Yeah, that's poor defense by Western Kentucky because that, that's what Jansen Williams been doing all game, pick and pop. And he's had the rhythm going from three. And now you need a key stop here. If I'm Rick Stansbury, the clock is your friend. So you're telling you guys, all right, we're not going to get into our stuff until maybe nine or eight on the shot clock. You run this down, you get a bucket. This is really dagger type bucket here if you're able to take this shot clock down. You see Marshall going to full court man on man. Oh, almost a poster. But a good block at the rim. Now on the other end for the thundering herd, Kenzie kicks out to Byers and it's tipped out of bounds. Yeah, I, I, I get what Tavion Hollinsworth was trying to do, and it would have been unbelievable if he would have got that dunk down. But the clock's your friend there. Now you got a chance for your Marshall. You hit a three here. It's a one-possession game. We have to play smart here on 
in the final two minutes of the game. Here is Williams for three. That one's short. Fight for the rebound. West couldn't keep it in bounds. Yeah, he just rushed that one. Jansen Williams, I think Dan D'Antoni had to be happy with the guy who was shooting it. He just kind of rushed that shot. Now, no need to foul, but on the flip side, you're right back to where you were if you're Western Kentucky. The clock is your friend. Now, Jansen Williams, 19 points, 5 of 7 from three-point land, and Marshall does have a couple of fouls to give here. That foul by Taylor, just a fourth team foul in the second half. Yeah, well, this is like, how do you want to die here? Do you want to die trying to play defense, or do you want to try to put a team at the free throw line that's number one in Conference USA? And like you said earlier, lights out today. So I think if you're Dan D'Antoni, I get that you have to start fouling. There's only 14 fouls, but you got to try to go for a steal here with some active hands. You cannot play this out. If this was a one possession game, you could play this out, but now you do have to start fouling right away. Final minute. Gotta try to send the double, or else, if you're Western Kentucky, run this clock down. And now you don't want to foul if you're Marshall. Eight to shoot. Now the Hilltoppers will execute. Arms work the lob to Bassey. <laughs> Rick, Rick Stansbury couldn't have been too happy on the previous possession, but that possession, execution, spot on. The law of the bass, he gives him 21 points along with 19 rebounds on the night, Tim. Oh, that was outstanding execution. The previous play, Hollinsworth, I thought went a little bit too fast here. Took the shot clock down to four, had the defense commit. And it's nice when you can just throw it up there to your All-American center. Bassey knows what to do, and he's chasing 20 and 20 in this game, right, Danny? Absolutely. He just needs one more rebound tonight to eclipse 20 rebounds here in this game. So if you're Marshall and Dan D'Antoni, Tim, what do you tell your team? What do you need to go for here? Yeah, you see the 19 rebounds, career high for the 6'11 junior. To answer your question, it's first good look. And Marshall loves to shoot the three. I think they need a three here. Problem is Western Kentucky knows they need a three. So if I'm the Hilltoppers, I got both feet above the three-point line, almost forcing Marshall to drive. Long range three short, rebounded by Jared West. Shot clock is turned off. Lower to go, kicks it out to Taylor. Taylor trying to get to their hot hand in Williams and is stolen away by Josh Anderson. And that's going to do it. Western Kentucky pick up their 10th win of the season. 81 to 73, the final here in EA Diddle Arena. Well, Marshall had its opportunities, but Rick Stansbury's crew was a lot of fun to watch. There's no other way to say it. Josh Anderson was flying all over the court. Charles Bassey with a monster effort, a career high in rebounds. Uh, this is going to be a battle that we're going to see throughout Conference USA season. But I thought the execution by Western Kentucky was the best they looked from an offensive standpoint all year long. 46 points in the first half. They got to the free throw line. They dominated the glass. And they get the conference win over the Thundering Herd. A great victory as Western Kentucky improves the 3-2 and two in Conference USA play. We'll be right back after the break on CBS Sports Network. Western Kentucky, an 81 to 73 victory over the thundering herd of Marshall here on CBS Sports Network. We are now joined with Charles Bassey after an incredible night, 21 points and 19 rebounds. Charles, great performance, ninth double-double on the season. What was it like there in the last couple of minutes trying to secure that victory? Uh, you know, uh, our coach was just like, we just got to execute hard because, you know, they were, they were digging on us. They were, like, playing a good defense. So we just got to uh, execute hard and just, he called the play with um, Tavion got to drive in. And he knows when Tavion driving, the, the other bigs going to sink on him trying to block shot. So we did the play, we run the play, and then they were trying to block the shot, and he gave me the love, and I finished the play. Uh, five more blocks in this game for you, Charles. Are you conscious of when you block a shot? 
to keep it in bounds because when you reject shots, they traditionally don't go out of bounds. Is that just is that something you actually think about on the floor? No, I don't. I, I just play the game. You know, I'm, I I'll say it's part of my game. I'm used to it. I just block it in bounds. You know, I'm not. Since when I've been playing basketball, I always block I always block my shot in bounds. So I mean, I'm used to it. That's part of my game. So I, that's not that's not the stuff you can teach. It's just a it's just something you you know. It's in me. So I just I just I just do when I play. So it's already in me. Well, let me give you some advice. Keep doing it because it's working out really well for your squad. I've watched you since freshman year, but I really want you to take us inside of your own game. You. What's been the biggest improvement in your own game from your first year to now? Uh, first, I, I'll just say, you know, coming into my freshman year, I was, uh, I was a lot, of, I was a lot of bigger than than this. You know, I was, I was too big. You know, I had to lose weight, and then you know, I had to just uh, get more of my skill set better. More of my shooting, more of my ball handling, and the more of just going, going, going for every every ribbon. And you know, if you, if you can remember from my freshman year, you know, I'll say I, I take I take couple positions, um, couple possessions off, you know. But right now, you know, I just take every position serious, you know. I just I just I just go hard. I just go hard every time, you know. I just I just think what's changing my game is my effort plays, you know. I go every time. That's the difference with me now. Charles, great win. Best of luck on the road moving forward. We'll wrap things up after the break here on CBS Sports Network. Thank you.